Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, as I promised at the end of last week's video, we're going to take a look at the Wi-Fi Tracks WFD30 Wi-Fi interface for NCE systems. And let me tell you, you can't believe how simple this is to set up and use. So stick around for the video. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Now, at the end of last week's video, I said it would probably take me a couple of weeks before I was ready to take a look at the Wi Fi Tracks WFD interface for NCE DCC systems. However, I took a look at the manual and it is so simple and easy to do that I thought I would jump right into it with a quick video on how to set it up and get it operating right out of the bag without really doing a lot of extra work. And then in a follow-up video in a couple of weeks, once I've had a chance to actually work with the device some and get a feel for how it actually works, then we'll take a look at some of the advanced features. For example, how to set up rosters within the unit, how to control accessories, and a lot of other things that are available without the necessity to use JMRI Decoder Pro for a lot of these advanced features. So let's go ahead. I want to pull this out of the bag show you how to set it up real quick and get started. And I'll show you how to use it with an iPhone. And I'll show you how to use it with the TCS UWT100. But I don't want this video to be a really long thing. I want you to see how easy this is to set up and get running in the convenience of your model railroad. So let's go ahead and get over here to the model railroad and we'll get it hooked up and I'll show you how it works. First, let's take a look at what you get in the package because there's not a lot to worry with. Uh, I've already opened it, obviously, and tested it before doing this video, but we'll do an unboxing here. First off, you'll see it comes with a set of mounting screws and uh, some either plastic or nylon offsets uh, so that when you install it, you don't crack the board. And you get the quick start manual. It's about 16 pages long. There's not a lot in here that you have to worry with. It does tell you how to set it up, how to set the address, but it comes with a default address preset, and you don't need to worry with that. So I'm going to show you how to go ahead and set it up, and then I'll let you take a look at the manual. Um, so the, uh, the circuit board itself comes packaged in this uh, static-free envelope, and this is all there is to it. It's a very small device. Now let me point out that this and the WFD31, this is the WFD30, are basically the same thing. And you'll see those advertised together. And the WFD30 is for use with any NCE DCC system. You just hook it up through a cable to the cab bus on your system, on your layout, and you're ready for it to go. The WFD31, on the other hand, has extra components on the board. It has a socket, and I'll show you a photograph here in a second while I talk about it, but it has a socket where you can plug in the power cab power supply. It has a couple of terminals where you can attach the track wires. So basically, it has all the components on it to allow you to use it instead of what they call the PCP panel with the power cab. That's the power panel that, uh, that the power cab plugs into. So you can just take the WFD31 board, attach it to the little black faceplate, and install that in place of the uh, panel that came with the power cap. And you're ready to run right away. And that greatly simplifies the installation because you simply swap it out for your existing uh, power panel on your power cap. And um, so then really, it is, although it is designed uh, to make use with the power cab very easy. So what I want to do right off then is show you it's got these two ports right here on this side that you plug in the cab bus to and that gives you a connection to your uh, power cab. Right here in the center there's a little dip switch set up here with uh, three little switches and that's what you use for setting the address. Now it comes preset for address 10 which is fine to use with your power cab and gives you extra room for, for throttles. Now the great thing about this, as soon as you hook this up, you'll be able to attach a Wi-Fi device to it, and you can connect up to four different Wi-Fi throttles 
to your system using the WFD30 or 31. So it really expands your capability as far as the number of throttles you can use. Now one thing about using the WFD30 or 31 is that it does not require JMRI or Decoder Pro. This will generate its own little Wi-Fi hotspot. Your throttles will connect directly to it. You don't have to go through JMRI to create or to access a uh, Y throttle hotspot. So it's perfectly standalone. You'll be able to just turn your layout on and log on with your throttle, your iPhone or your Android phone or whatever, and you'll be able to start running right away without turning on your computer. And I'm talking about simple ones like being able to use Y throttle on your iPhone, and I'll show you how that works here in a minute, or using one of the TCS Wi-Fi throttles such as the UWT100 or the UWT50. And I've done videos on how to use these in the past, and I'll put links to these uh, above me here and also at the end of the video so that if you're interested, you can go back and look at those. And there are certainly other Wi-Fi capable throttles available on the market that you could use with this. So right now I'm going to concentrate on using the iPhone and using the UWT100 Wi-Fi throttles. So let's go over here to the layout, hook up the WFD30, and we'll see how it works. Now I'm going to be setting this up with my Aegis system, which uses the power cab, as I've shown you in the past. So what I have here then is the standard NCE fascia panel, where you would connect your throttles to it. You can see I've got my cab 06 connected right here. And so basically we're going to set this up just like you would any other uh, throttle on your layout. And I'm going to use this little uh, four wire, four pin coily cord that came from NCE with uh, one of my throttles here. And all you have to do then is just plug that in right here. Very simple. Okay, I'm going to step over and turn the layout on now that it's connected. Okay, you can see with the little red light that we've got the uh, powers on and the cab is now active. Okay, so those two. Now there's another one on here. There's a little green light that will show you when we've got network activity. Okay, let's set up a, uh, let's set up a cab. Now when you're working with an iPhone or an Android phone, uh, you'll be dealing with an app and these are available on the app stores. Uh, the one for the um, iPhone is called Y Throttle. The one for the Android devices is called Engine Driver. And they both work, excuse me, pretty much the same way. Uh, on the uh, iPhone, you have the Y Throttle Lite and the Y Throttle. The Lite is a free version that allows you to download it and test it out, see if you like it. And the Y Throttle here, that's paid for, it's a few dollars. And uh, that one is the full version that I'll be showing you today. And once you get this up and operating, uh, it runs very well. It'll log back on automatically uh, to the, wi uh, to the uh, Wi-Fi tracks interface. So it's very straightforward to use, as I'll show you here in a second. Also, there are iPad versions of this. Let me bring that up. There's an iPad version of this, so I've actually done this with an iPad before. And in the past, I've done videos showing how to use this with uh, the uh, NCE USB interface to go through JMRI. But as I said, you don't need to use JMRI or Decoder Pro for an interface. You'll be using the WFD30 or 31 interface completely. Okay, let's move on and see how this works. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is set up your uh, Wi-Fi connection. And that's done in your settings. And I'm going to go to Wi-Fi and wait for... Um, and you can see Wi-Fi tracks WFD30 right there in the display. So that's active. So now I can go back. Oops, went too far. And we'll bring up the Y-throttle. Okay, so I brought up Y throttle here, and we're going to select a locomotive. Now I can go from my recents list, and I could pick 1363 this way and hit select, or I can go to the keypad, and we're going to hit 1363, 
and we're going to hit set. Okay, and that makes it active. And then I'm going to go down here to my throttle. So we right here, we've got our throttle set up. Let's listen. So a fast, responsive uh, throttle connection. And then right here, we're set to go forward. And this is the little speed control dial right here. So I can crank that up. The locomotive's going to start to move off. And if you watch, you can see that as this moves up and down, there's a little display right here on the button that tells you the speed step. So, whoops, hit the wrong button there. Okay, so let's crank it up in reverse. And we're on speed step 26, 49, and now I can bring it to a stop. Just like that. So it's a very responsive uh, way to control your locomotives as long as you're happy with using this virtual slider type control and your various functions. And there's different ways to go in here using Wi-Fi tracks and the settings of your wide throttle here to set up uh, the different function names, that kind of thing. And we'll cover that later on in the advanced feature functions that uh, I just mentioned earlier. Let's go ahead and switch on over to the UWT100 and see how that sets up. Okay, so this is my UWT100. I'm going to turn it on. You just press 2, press any button to get it turned on. And it's going to come up and tell you to press 2 to start, so I did that. And it's already connected to Wi-Fi tracks because I did play with this earlier. But to do that, you would go in here and you could scroll down, because that's that little menu setting, and, uh, and go down to Network Options and hit that. And you could add a network and it's scanning for the Wi-Fi there. So let's wait for it to come up with the Wi-Fi tracks. And so that's right there. So we're going to select it, and that's it. Okay, so we're connected to the Wi-Fi tracks, and it's already set on GWR 060. So let's see what it sounds like. And that was because that was the locomotive that I had previously been using when I tested this out beforehand. And it's got a nice thumb wheel right here. I like a nice thumb wheel to control the locomotive speed. I like this thumb wheel on the throttle better than the one that comes with the uh, power cab. So you can see we're getting a speed step readout. It's telling me it's the 060, and we've got functions. Right there, get a heads up display. And I said, there's ways of setting these up so that the function would say uh, whistle and horn or whatever, steam whistle and, and guard whistle and things like that. You can see it says headlight over here. Um, in addition to that, it's got this 2859 right there, so you can switch back and forth between two active locomotive numbers here. So I can go with the 060, stop it, I can switch over to the 2859, which is behind it, and a little bit louder whistle on that booger. So you can easily switch back and forth. I really like these throttles because they're so quick and easy to switch between uh, locomotives like that. And also, as I said, because of the nice thumb wheel here. And of course, the other one has a potentiometer or an encoder. I'm not sure which. I'd have to check and see which one I bought. That's how quick and easy it is to set this up and be operating your trains within just a minute or two. So hopefully I've given you a good idea of how quick and easy it is to set this up and have it operating with your power cab or with any other of the NCE DCC systems available on the market. It literally just plugs into one of your cab ports on your fascia panel on either the front or the rear, and you're up and running just that quick, as fast as, as long as it takes to select it in the settings 
for whichever throttle you're using. And you can use it with your, y, uh, with your iPhone using Y throttle. You can use it with Android. There's a, a program for uh, Android phones and tablets called Engine Driver. And there are various other Wi-Fi throttles available out there on the market today that you can select from. And uh, I think this, you know, as I've said in the past, Wi-Fi connectivity like this is the wave of the future. A lot of the European DCC systems are now coming with their own Wi-Fi server built into the command station, so they can use anybody's Wi-Fi throttles with them. Now, as I said earlier, in a future video, I will go back and take another look at this. We'll dive deeper into the advanced features and functions that come with it. But for now, this will get you up and running in just a matter of minutes. And had you using your UWT throttles from TCS or an iPhone or an Android phone, you could use an iPad, you could use an Android uh, pad of some sort, you can use all kinds of things like that. So there's a lot of capabilities with Wi-Fi. And the great thing about the uh, Wi-Fi tracks device is this was the easiest I've ever used. I've used the Digitrax uh, Linwi Wi-Fi server. I've used the one that MRC makes. And I can tell you, this one beats both of them hands down for connectivity and speed. So if you have a NCE DCC system, either a PowerCab or a PH Pro or one of the other systems they've manufactured, or if you belong to a club that has an NCE system, you'd be able to use this Wi-Fi interface at any of those or with any of those. So give that a thought. Take a look at their website, wifitracks.com, or just do a Google search for Wi-Fi tracks, and you'll be able to find that. As far as who sells these, well, uh, you can check with Iron Planet Hobbies. I know they're uh, one of their vendors, you can go to the Wi-Fi Tracks website and they have a listing on there of all of their dealers worldwide. And you can find a dealer possibly near you who actually sells these and would have them in stock. You can just go pick it up or you can mail order it from one of the various vendors around the world. So that's it for today's video. Have a great weekend, a great week, and I'll see you here with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.